Andrew Urquhart with you on the program today. As mentioned, this time yesterday, uh, shock at the unexpected and sudden death of a Green Party MP, Efeso Collins, who had been, well, a politician and an advocate uh, for the people of South Auckland for many years, um, passing suddenly at a charity event uh, yesterday morning and certainly uh, tributes have flowed from uh, people that knew him, uh, people um, that had worked with him over the years somebody who certainly worked with him in particular last year in uh, putting together the State of Our Communities report is Anna Ika from the Salvation Army Social Policy Unit Anna, kia ora, good morning Good morning, Andrew. Thanks for having me. I mean, this is a, a sudden and unexpected uh, passing of a man who was much loved within his community. Yeah, absolutely. It was a it was a shock. I think it's a shock to everyone. It's a significant loss for South Auckland for our Pacific communities. Um, Fess was yeah he 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 was a a trailblazer in regards to advocating and um, just being a voice for our Pacific communities out there. And so yeah, it's a significant loss. And so you know, our loving prayers go out to Fia and um, his girls and and the rest of um, his family. And yeah. and yes. Yeah, and so um, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's yeah, it's quite it's quite saddening, but also at the same time, um, Fess was a man of faith, and yes. I guess that's the encouraging thing about us believers is that we have that blessed assurance, eh? And that yeah, and when Paul says, you know, when you're absent in the flesh, you're present um, with the Lord, and so I think those are things that uh, we hold on to and um, comfort those who were close to him or those that did work with him. That um, yeah that he, he was a significant advocate both in, um, both in yeah, even before he became a politician, he yep. was working in the communities and making a difference. So, yeah, really grateful that I had the opportunity to work with him, but not only in, you know, he supported our work with the state of our communities, but in other community regards, he was always present, um, always gave his time, um, always showed up to be able to speak at different events and encourage particularly young people mm-hmm. um, in, I guess, the, the challenges that we face here in South Auckland. So I'm really grateful for, I guess, the, the legacy that he's left behind and, um, yeah, and that we would continue to build on that. Yeah. Now, talk to us about the, your connection with him. You mentioned a State of the Communities report, but I mean, he's long been an advocate for peoples of South Auckland as well. What was your connection with him? How specifically did you work together, Anna? Well, because because uh, Fess, he had a significant role in regards to um, university students and particularly the Pacific Christian Fellowship um, there during his time, and so. Um, you, you, he he would often go back um, and encourage, um, you know, Pacific students of faith that are that are contending in the universities in regards to their faith and um, yeah, making sense of it. And so um, I cro- I was able to cross paths with him in that aspect, okay. but also um, in other areas as well. He was a he was a significant advocate when it came to uh, Chloe's uh, members' bill last year okay. in regards to putting it across the council to voting uh, that in, and he was an advocate for that also. But like I I don't think a lot of people know, but uh, Fess did uh, significant work um, in the around uh, youth work. So uh, previously, like many years ago, um, South Auckland had a significant youth gang problem, um, and he came in and did a lot of the consultancy work uh, with, um, um, with the, which kind of built the foreground that we have all of these significant youth services in South Auckland today, um, and that was one of the building blocks was a lot of the work that he had done in that space. Um, and so just really, yeah, just reflecting on that and just grateful for um, his work for South Auckland, for young people, for Pacific communities, and for all of New Zealand um, ultimately. And so, yeah, and then last year I was able to work alongside with him um, as he was one of our community our leaders that spoke to us around um, around state of our communities for Manukau, mm-hmm. um, and he was just really passionate about um, empowering our Pacific and our South Auckland communities to be able to rise above, you know, the negative statistics or rise above the the rhetoric that often comes out of South Auckland. And so, yeah. and and that's that's that that was really encouraging because it often, um, when you're working in in our in our types of communities with the challenges we face, it's it's easy to get disheartened. Mm. I mean, he was always hopeful. Um, and yeah, always. Yeah, always um, took a strength-based approach as to how do we strengthen communities to be able to rise above. Um, and yeah, and unfortunately, um, we're grateful to see that he had 
made it through um, into the um, into Parliament. Yep. Um, but it's unfortunate that yeah, his 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 time has been kind of cut short. But overall, you know, the Lord is sovereign in mm. in all things, and grateful for the legacy that he's been able to leave behind. Now, of course, he was um, running for the mayor of Auckland at the the last mayoral elections. That wasn't to be. Um, but I, I suppose this just shows um, the, the caliber of the man. He's uh, he's quite happy to put it out there when he was unsuccessful at that. A change to the Green Party. And one of the things that I've noticed, Anna, is the uh, the tributes that have come through in the last 24 hours. He was a guy that was a friend of so many people from very very diverse communities. And even in his maiden speech, which he gave in Parliament just so recently, his first and last speech before parliamentary colleagues. Uh, just just very well respected across the political spectrum, across different aspects of society, as you say, unashamedly a man of faith, but a a colleague and a friend of people that that wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily expect uh, would be uh, friends with somebody who had such a strong faith. And I think part of the uh, the tragedy of this here was somebody who who has a robust faith, who was in a position of influence, who was in a situation where he was bringing people together. He could work across the aisles. He could uh, develop relationships and and um, uh, work in in partnership with people from different political stripes. He, he really brought people together, uh, and, and that will be sadly missed within Parliament. Yeah, absolutely. He, yeah, he, he definitely, um, you know, uh, was... was was a, a man of caliber, as you say, Andrew, yeah. and um, yeah, and really worked alongside all communities and everybody, and um, ultimately it was for the the same purpose to be able to uplift communities, um, to be able to strengthen communities, and so um, yeah, that I guess that that was a um, something that, of a fest that we were yeah really encouraged by mm-hmm. about um, you know about his his I guess in his light of advocacy was to be able to um, engage with um, Everyone in all peoples to be able to um, be, be, be able to shift change and trans, transform communities, and so um, yeah. So it's a it's a it's a significant loss to Aotearoa, but you know the Bible reminds us that life is but a vapor and tomorrow is not promised, and so um, we do all that we can um, in the time that we have to be able to honor and serve the Lord, and yeah, and just um, yeah reflect on um, his achievements that he's been able mm. to leave behind. Um, but also just yeah, just really mindful of the 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 suddenness of uh, this loss and yeah, the impact that it would have on um, on our on our Pacific communities, on our South Auckland communities, and yeah. So yeah, Lis- <laughs> listening to his maiden speech, um, thinking about the the potential, how much he could have achieved in Parliament if only he had more time. As you say, it's in the Lord's timing. And, and and God knows the details in that. I suppose a challenge for, for those of us who are left, uh, those that know him and those that were inspired by him, to also be um, agents of change, to be spheres of influence within our communities, to make relationships with uh, people that we may have political differences with, but that we rise above that uh, for the sake of, of what we're hoping to achieve and, and making better societies. Um, I, I suppose to be inspired, to be challenged, to live like he lived, that would be a wonderful legacy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he, he had, you know, some really amazing characteristics and I think we, we can all take a bit um, of his life and learn from it and be, be able to, you know, replicate those things in our lives as well um, to, you know, to live live unto the Lord and to glorify him in whatever work the Lord has called us to, you know, whether it's in politics, whether it's in advocacy, whether it's, you know, whether it's in none of those areas, but um, everyone has a sphere of influence, of whatever shape or form that looks like. And, um, you know, the Lord's placed people around us that we'll be able um, to encourage and to build up and to strengthen. And, yeah, and, and so, um, yeah, just reflecting on Fess's life. Um, and the legacy that he's left behind, I think that those are those are things that um, he had done for our communities, and so we take joy in in in, in the fact that um, yeah he was able to serve in the way that he did.
Yeah. Well, hey, thank you for taking the time to to share your thoughts and reflections on Fisa Collins. And I mean, as you say, our, our thoughts and prayers firstly with, with the family and those who, who loved him dearly and who, who miss him terribly. But thank you for the work that you do. Anna, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Cool. Thanks, Andrew.